Now for the next few minutes, I'll be giving you few tips, key tips for building a dashing dashboard. Okay. So, first tip, wherever possible, try to use real-time data. For example, if you're having a YouTube channel, then you can connect your YouTube analytics and build a dashboard in Google Data Studio. Embed it in your website. You can get real-time YouTube analytics. Since people here are researchers and doctors, I can give you a more correlatable example. If you are into a research project and you are collecting data via Google Forms, then you can integrate that Google Sheet to your dashboard and you can get that dashboard into your website or just keep it in your Google Data, data, or Google data Studio itself. And uh, by this way, whenever someone is filling a form in Google Forms, it will get automatically into your Google Sheets and that will be automatically reflected in your Google Data Studio. But uh, how does it even helpful? For example, you are doing an online survey about awareness of blood donation among medical students. You are planning to do it as a national survey or an international study survey. Okay, so you have started circulating the forms through your contacts, and through various platforms, WhatsApp groups and all. If this Google Sheet uh, is linked to the Google form, which is connected to our uh, dashboard, but every time someone fills the Google form, that will automatically re uh, reflect in the map of your dashboard, the world map or the Indian map of your dashboard, the data will be automatically reflected. By this way, you can identify that particular states or particular cities are not participating adequately in your study. Then you can call your friend in that state or city or country and ask him uh, for help in circulation of the Google form. So by that way, you'll be able to identify where is your data lacking, like where is the participation lacking and you can address it on real time. Isn't it super cool? This is just the simplest example I can give. Imagine about the n number of use cases which you can build around by using this dashboard skills. Okay, so that's the power of dashboard. Next key tip is to build, uh, to build a dashing dashboard is to know your audience. Okay, some of your audience might re require precise figures while some of them just need to see the trends. Okay, and we as researchers or public health professionals, our stakeholders range from the highest authorities of the country till the end users like the patients. In such case, if we have the option of building only one dashboard, a single dashboard, convince all the stakeholders, what all the various options in Google Data Studio which we can utilize? Please type in the chat box. You have seen videos in the past for the past two, three days. What options can be utilized to make our compact or dashboard compact? It, it is comprehensive. It includes all the necessary details. I'll repeat the question. If you want to convince all your stakeholders by you by just showing a single screen, a single dashboard, that dashboard should convince all the stakeholders and give all the required data. Okay, how will you how will you build such a wonderful dashboard? Uh, such an easy question, actually. I think people are typing. Okay. Interesting charts, yes, Mr. Deep sir. Graph and chart, excellent. Okay, yes, these are uh, very relevant answers. Uh, one more feature, which is always my all time favorite, is drill down and optional metrics. Okay, for example, your dashboard is having a table which shows, or a table or a scorecard which shows the number of COVID cases or number of tuberculosis cases. Okay. Uh, in uh, in in India, and if you want to show this dashboard to the central health minister, he will see this table. In this table, each state how many cases are there will be mentioned. Tamil Nadu thousand cases, uh, Bihar uh, two hundred cases. Like this, it will be mentioned, and he will be happy. Fine. The same dashboard you are taking and going and showing to the health minister of Maharashtra or health minister of Bihar. Then what he will see? He is not interested about cases in other states. Rather, he is interested about number of cases in each district of Bihar. So he will click on Bihar and it will automatically drill down into different states of Bihar, different districts of Bihar. So Patna has uh, 20 cases, uh, like Muzaffarpur has uh, 10 cases, like this district wise he will be able to see. Okay, The same dashboard you take and go to the district medical officer or some district level authorities or a civil surgeon. So he is more interested about number of cases in, and, uh, in his district. Okay. And if you are showing it to a PhD medical officer, he is more interested about number of cases in his block or in his ward or uh, in his region. Okay. So to show the, to convince or to provide the necessary detail of all the stakeholders, 
a single dashboard is enough and using the drill down option optional metric option and the various interactions with the within the google data studio you can make it possible okay you need not curate your dashboard each and every time you are going to show to a different stakeholder once you are building a proper dashboard the same dashboard can be utilized to provide data to convince all the stakeholders and provide data at whichever level of granularity that stakeholder is preferring okay isn't it such a powerful tool if you are doing the same in a microsoft word or excel and you are trying to take printouts how many printouts you will take uh, thousands and thousands of pages you should take to provide such vast amount of data based on the example which i said okay so uh, this is the power of dashboard and we can utilize it appropriately for the better of uh, public health okay i have some messages okay let's check oh check yes govind sir yes i agree atul pandey uh, sir yes uh, example i am definitely giving an example now i have given a verbal example a practical example i will be giving okay next step uh, to build a dashing dashboard is to stay consistent consistency is the key not only in learning how to build dashboard even in building dashboard that should be consistency to make your dashboards easily navigable ensure consistency in functions filters colors and styles so establishing a consistent look and feel to dashboard helps the users uh, to find information faster for example uh, if you are displaying a trend line or line chart with smooth lines then try to stick with it for other lines charts also similarly there are multiple functionalities which can be utilized for each visual we should try to maintain uniformity as much as possible uniformity in color uniformity in design so that it makes navigation easy for the end user okay so the next step for uh, building a dashing dashboard is to group the data logically so keeping like data together helps the users navigate information more easily particularly when different stakeholders use the same same dashboard i think it's again self explanatory you should try to group data logically group the uh, same kind of uh, charts together or group the same kind of metrics together okay then you should have a clear goal before building a dashboard only if you are convinced with yourself as to why you are creating this dashboard then only it will be easy for you to build a dashboard and to convince the end user or convince this different stakeholders so have a clear goal why you are building this dashboard what do you expect at the end of building this dashboard what you are trying to uh, showcase all you should have a very clear idea so that the whole process becomes smooth and easy okay now also try to have high quality and clean data if you have a clean and high quality data you can build even complex dashboards within matter of 30 minutes or 40 minutes okay so you key clean data as for any analysis clean data is the key and once you have it it is easy for you to uh, get the dashboard well easily okay now so uh, this is an interesting visual what do you interpret from this visual please type in the chat box please interpret this visual i'm waiting for people to type let me give a 10 seconds break world population of world in pie chart okay okay good country wise population okay okay so our next step is to use appropriate visuals for appropriate data okay representation of country wise population yes biswadeep sir got it this is a very cumbersome okay too many countries in a single pie chart okay so we should use appropriate visuals deepana ma'am yes we have to see country wise and percentage wise okay okay you few of you got it what i'm trying to uh, make a point here okay so instead of a pie chart we could have used a bubble map or heat map here using an appropriate visual for appropriate data is very essential okay by using the current correct visualization options we can avoid cluttering of data here if i have used the world map then very it is it is very easy for you to interpret right instead of using a pie chart which is so cumbersome and cluttered like this i could have opted for a better visualization so uh, we should avoid presenting too much information in one dashboard or one visual and we should have appropriate visualization for appropriate data that is why we have beautiful options in google data studio like heat maps bubble maps with the wonderful options of drill down and optional metrics okay 
Let me check if I have missed any messages. Visualization is not appropriate. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. So next step. What is this step? Uh, can you just type in the chat box? What What is happening here? What is happening in this picture? Comparing. Okay. What else? Storytelling. Yes. The Govinda sir got it correct. Storytelling is happening here. Your dashboard should basically tell stories. Okay. So, uh, uh, dashboard storytelling it is a process of presenting data in a visually appealing manner that will depict the whole narrative of the data analysis process in order to efficiently understand the strategies and goals. In other words, efficient storytelling will help you and communicate the messages in the clearest way possible. So, it is like your dashboard should be self explanatory, it is easy to navigate, and the end user should be able to extract the necessary detail without anyone's help. Okay, it should basically tell stories. Okay, different narration to different stakeholders. Yes, Matit sir. Yes, agree. Next, this is a wonderful visual. Whoever is under interpreting this visual will get a chocolate. Okay, interpret this visual. What is this visual? Trend. Okay. What do you interpret from this? Some trend. Okay. Manavam is selling some trends. Okay. Time trend. Okay. Line diagram. Okay. Fine. Okay. People are your people are naming this, naming this uh, visualization. But I want. What do you interpret from it? Trend. Okay, trend plot using year and other variables. Okay, okay, real time. Okay, I just put I just put this image because it resembles to our logo, this head all logo. Okay, <laughs> so uh, this is uh, this is just a we are this is just a slide, which is to make you understand that you should provide context to your visual. Okay, Hari Priya ma'am said uh, connecting the dots. Okay. Okay, we are connected by a program called Connecting the Dots by IAPSM. So even that is indirectly meant here. Okay, we can compare real time data. Okay, actually, Hari Priya was telling this is time graph. Someone was telling it is real time data. Someone is telling trend. So the trend is increasing or decreasing, or time means which year, which month. Nothing is. I can't tell anything. Okay, this is some line, but that is increasing trend or decreasing trend even that I don't know. Okay. So I didn't provide proper context here. Okay. So the next valuable tip for building a dashing dashboard is to provide context for your visuals. Okay. Without providing context, how will you know whether those numbers are good or bad, or if this is typical or unusual? Okay. Without comparison values, numbers on a dashboard are meaningless for the users, and more importantly, they won't know whether any action is required. Okay. Always try to provide maximum information, even if some of them seem very obvious to you. Your audience might find it very difficult. Okay, uh, I might think that okay, this is okay. Uh, some of you would have thought that okay, this is very obvious. This is very closely resembling to a time series chart, and it is showing that the trend is increasing, decreasing, increasing, decreasing. Okay, this might be uh, understandable for me as a builder of this dashboard. This might be understandable for few of you who are regularly dealing with uh, trend lines. But for someone who is new, who is like who is kind of not even related to medicine, some different stakeholder. If he's seeing this, he wouldn't understand anything. So we should provide the necessary details, even if it is so obvious to us. Okay. So remember to provide comparison value. The rule of thumb is that more uh, use most common comparisons. For example, comparison against the target, comparison against the preceding period, or against the projected value. This is an effective dashboard design tip, which you, which you should always consider to have a very good dashboard. Okay. Next is the personally this is my personal time tracking slide. Okay, so I'll explain you what this slide is. Okay, so this is basically my performance in the last thirty days. This is my performance in the last seven days. Okay, so this is a dashboard uh, built by me using my uh, Google Data Studio. So I have a Google Sheet in which I use to enter every day how much time I'm spending for each activity. So in the past thirty days. The academic, the time spent for academic is 71 hours, which is 55 percentage increase 
when compared to last 30 days. The time spent for research is 50 hours, this is 17% increase. The time spent for entrepreneurship is 43, uh, 43 hours, which is 36% decrease. Okay. Similarly, this dark blue line is for this week, whereas this light blue line is for the previous week. You could see a short fall during Sundays because Sundays are rest days. Similarly, Saturday, the productivity is comparatively low. And the total hour for the past seven days is 75 hours, which is six percentage lesser than the previous thing. Okay. So these are the, uh, imagine how much time would I have spent for building this dashboard? Literally took two to three minutes. Okay. Uh, so we are expecting that at the end of five days, we should be able to build a dashboard, a complicated dashboard in 30 minutes. Okay. And when uh, these kind of dashboards, you can simply build in a matter of few minutes. Why? Because we just see this, uh, this is just a scorecard. This is another scorecard. This is another scorecard. I'm just comparing against the last 30 days. This is a uh, line series chart. I'm comparing the seven days performance with the previous seven days performance. Literally, there are only two components. Okay. So this is as simple as that. Okay. And just for honesty reasons, let me reveal that uh, this is the uh, that that uh, thing which I showed in PowerPoint was like a month back. Okay, a performance of a month back. This is the latest updated version, which shows uh, I have added basically I have added two more uh, uh, time series chart which shows month wise performance each month and this is week week wise performance and all the performance has gotten down drastically because I was on a vacation. Okay, so now 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 I would know that okay my academics. I'm not, uh, my academics is 60% decrease. Okay. My research activities is 36% decrease, but my entrepreneurship is 60% increase. Now, what should I do? Now I should decrease my focus on entrepreneurship activities and administrative activities, and I should focus more on academics and research. Okay. So this kind of real time insights I'll be able to get. And based on that, I can take actionable, uh, I can take actions which will help me in enhancing my performance and productivity. Okay. Imagine you are applying in all walks of your life. For example, you are applying for your research project or you are applying for your hospital administration or you are applying for tracking your finances. So the use case is innumerable. Okay. So these are the wonderful ways you can uh, check your data. You can uh, play around with your data. Okay. Fine.